Red to Win, brought to you by Inglis. Don't miss round two of the Easter Yelling Sale, Riverside Stables, July 5. Caroline CSE, thanks for joining me for another edition of Bread to Win. Coming up on this week's show, Stradbroke Day in Brisbane and the first British classics of the season. We hear from Mark Webster about Inglis Easter Part 2 and plenty of other Inglis news. More Australian Stud and Stable Staff Award finalists. Cambridge Stud's Katie Smith explains exactly what goes into taking a yearling through the sales ring. Auctioneer Chris Russell and his favourite Inglis sales story. And sticking to the Inglis theme, media manager Peter Fitzgerald in Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing. First so great group one racing right around the world coming up in the Cambridge Stud Bread to Win Wrap. Two feature Group 1s of the Brisbane Winter Carnival went to the locals. Ty Zone by Written Tycoon took out the Stradbroke handicap, having been sold by Kenmore Lodge at the Magic Millions two-year-old in training sale for $60,000. From a Hassanay mare, his third dam is Edward Manifold stakes winner Society Bay. Written Tycoon has moved to Arrowfield Stud for 2020, where he'll stand for $77,000. The JJ Atkins went to Rothsay, two-year-old, the ultra-impressive Rothfire. Also from a Hassanay mare, he was unwanted at any of the yearling sales and sold to trainer Rob Heathcote for $10,000 by the Gleeson family of Chinchilla. A son of Fastnet Rock and grandson of Canny Lass, Rothsay now stands at Queensland's Lindhurst Stud for an unchanged fee of $4,950. <laughs> three-year-old staying championship of the COVID revised Queensland Carnival, the Rough Habit Plate, was a great story of experience and a relative newcomer to training and some good old-fashioned tradition. Another grandson of Fastnet Rock, Ballistic Boy, prevailed for trainer Chris Anderson, who bought the horse with Duncan Ramage for $100,000 at the Magic Millions yearling sale to race in the famous Dato Tanchin Nam Colours. After a string of stakes placings, it was suggested Anderson follow an old Dato belief and clean the mirrors in the stables to bring good luck. And lo and behold, it was his first group success. Smart Missile also had Flemington win a standoff on Saturday and stands at Ollie Tate's Twin Hills stud this season for $22,000. Classique legend in front there on the Bob Charlie. At Randwick, the inaugural running of the Bob Charlie Stakes, formerly the June Stakes, saw elite sprinter Classique legend return in style. The son of not a single doubt from the fabulous mayor Pinocchio, assisted a racing to win, he was bought from Tyreel Stud by Carmel Size for $400,000 at the English Classic Sale. And it was a pride of Dubai two-year-old Quinella in the opening event at Randwick as star thoroughbreds achiever beat Dane Hill Smile's son Street Dancer in a great day for Denise Martin and her owners. As news came through that Western Australia's Mungrup stud is closing down, there was a stakes victory for resident stallion playing God as the Kingston Town Classic winner KC resumed with a win in the Raconteur stakes at Belmont. A peanut tubo trying to see off Wichita, Kamiko. And the delayed first British classics of the flat season saw Kamiko by Roaring Lion sire Kitten's Joy win the English 2000 Guineas, beating previously unbeaten Shamadal Colt Pinatubo. Kamiko is from a rock of Gibraltar mare and was bought for Qatar Racing by David Redvers for $90,000 from Keeneland's September sale. The 1,000 guineas was won by yet another filly by Galileo with Love winning for Aidan O'Brien, the filly a Coolmore homebred from a pivotal mare. And Arrowfield star Shala has had his first winner in France with Cherie Amour taking out the Prix de Colombe Marie at Clairefontaine. In news from New Zealand, respected horseman Mark Devich has been named as general manager of Cambridge Stud after the departure of longtime manager Marcus Corbin. Mark's wife Sarah will continue the management of their farm, Henley Park. And mayor owners who'd like to contribute to a great cause take note. Hi, my name's Katrina Williams, founder along with a whole bunch of incredible friends of the Catwalk Trust. We raise money for world-class, cutting-edge spinal cord injury research. If you break your neck or your back, it should not mean life in a wheelchair. This takes money. 
And thanks to Dali, we have been given the very last microphone service. If you've got a mare, I think you want a bit of this. Gavin House Plus, 11th to the 21st of June, is where you can bid on that very last service. Why? Well, in New Zealand, uh, one person every five days is told they're never going to walk again. In Australia, that happens every single day of the year. It costs 820 million a year in New Zealand to look after us, and in Australia, that cost is $2 billion. Catwalk has uh, worked with Spinal Cure Australia this year and supported that was $600,000, a massive amount of money. We're putting that into neurostimulation. Of all the promising avenues out there on the market at the moment, neurostimulation has delivered the most compelling results to date, returning significant feeling and function to people that have had spinal cord injury for many years. We're really excited about it. Continuing our look at the finalists in the 2020 Australian Stud and Stable Staff Awards. And if you breed or race horses, one of the most important things in the industry is their aftercare. And in the thoroughbred care and welfare category, the two finalists are from Victoria, Jade Willis and Liz Andreski. At Sally Yard Thoroughbreds, we take in off the tracks, direct from trainers and also thoroughbreds straight from the sales. So I was basically looking for a horse for myself um, and decided to go along to Chica Sales and got myself a nice off the track and then realised there was heaps there that were, you know, good for, you know, other stuff than meat. So we decided to go back and get one and then get another one. We're all self-funded here. You know, everything from purchasing the horse from the sales, feeding, farrier, you know, everything is all on us. So, you know, some weeks it's a bit a bit tight and a bit tough, and then other weeks, you know, you move a few that sort of helps things out, but um, yeah, it's all pretty much on us. To be nominated for this award um, was just a massive shock. I just couldn't believe that someone had thought, yeah, that I was worthy of it, um, and it's really great to be recognised. Since I was probably 14, I've had the odd thoroughbred and always had one on the go. Uh, and then at the start of last year, I said to my husband, I want to do more, let's get some land. And he got sucked in. And so we brought 40 acres and that's how JW Equestrian came about. And since then we've had a lot more thoroughbreds on the go. Probably 50% of the ones that come through, people ring me, the horse is too much or they're in a bad situation or the horse has been dumped with them in the paddock. And, so we take them, it doesn't matter if they're off the track, it doesn't matter where they come from, we take them and try and find them new homes. Just to be nominated was so, so cool, it's just amazing to think that people outside of my circle think that I'm doing a good job and yeah, it's just really cool. Stay with us on Bread to Win coming up after the break. Auctioneer Chris Russell and his favourite Inglis sales story. And Mark Webster on Inglis Easter 2, the world's first live thoroughbred auction since the COVID shutdown. Mm -hmm.